Cool. Well, it's the beginning of the session, and so I'm sure a few people will still be dialing in, but we can go ahead and get started. Um, I was playing a little music because we did that at our alumni event throughout the month of August, which we'll tell you more about later. Um, and I thought it was kind of a fun vibe. So hi, everyone. I'm PJ Mystery. I'm an alumnus of the Enactus organization. Um, I went to Flagler College in Florida in the United States and was part of Enactus, then Scythe for three years, Enactus my senior year for four years. And then I uh, graduated, had an internship with Unilever during my time because of Enactus, and then went on to have a full-time job with Unilever. So I've now been with Unilever seven years, which is crazy. Um, it's given me the opportunity to live in now three countries, take two cities in the United States, uh, was in Sao Paulo, Brazil for a few months, and now living in the Netherlands for the last two years. So really exciting. Um, just genuinely so grateful for the opportunities that Enactus started for me um, and the life that it's led me towards. It's been um, amazing and I've met the other alumni hosts that we have today throughout that journey. So really excited to have you join us today at this reception, though really it's just going to be you watching the four of us talk to each other, <laughs> but hopefully you enjoy. So with that, I would love to introduce you to Bradley. Bradley, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, sure. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning, evening, or afternoon, depending on where you are. So my name is Bradley Heslop. I'm an alumni from the University of Southampton in the UK. And since my Enactus time, I've set up a social enterprise working in four different sub-Saharan African countries, uh, working with local communities to develop solutions to issues they face, creating sustainable businesses around them that local people can run and then spreading those to other communities through a social franchise model uh, and then using that experience that we have there to consult other organizations looking to create sustainable change. Super cool. Was that triggered by your Enactus experience? It sounds a lot like an Enactus project. Exactly. It was. In, in the University of Southampton, we had quite a lot of different social enterprise type models. And towards the end of our time there, they had grown to the point where the business models were quite sophisticated and the impact was quite clear. And we actually got approached by a lot of organizations who wanted to work with us. Uh, introductions as well led to us thinking about how we can then scale this up. And we realized that this could actually change from a project to a social enterprise and be a sustainable venture in its own right. And so since the, the Enactus experience, we've then, me and my co-founder, as well as the Enactus team that stayed behind in Enactus, uh, we're working together to build this um, business called WSV, rebranding soon, so look out for that one, uh, <laughs> alongside four of our previous alumni and business advisors as well. Well, wow, that's amazing. I personally, um, even after all this time of knowing you, I find it super interesting that you took the Enactus experience. And even though I was triggered by Enactus to join a sponsor company, you literally took Enactus projects and went on to start your own enterprise. So truly an entrepreneur at heart. Um, super cool, Bradley. And um, with that, I'd love to also have Schmidta introduce herself and share a little bit about how she got involved in Enactus and what she's up to these days. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Shmita Ramkumar. I am an alumnus of Enactus India. Um, and I started the year, I think, Enactus was launched in India uh, in 2003. So I'm very happy I did not start uni any earlier than that. <laughs> I would have missed out on this life-changing experience, to be honest, because I joined as a student of biosciences, biochemistry, and molecular genetics. And through my Enactus experience, um, I got fascinated by the field of sustainable development. So I pretty much switched from there on, worked uh, and interned uh, in the field of social uh, entrepreneurship and sustainable development. And then I took the other route. I did not start something of my own like, Bra like Bradley, but I joined Enactus. Um, so I've been with Enactus as a staff member for about, I think just over 12 years now. Um, so it's been beautiful with Enactus India, with Global and uh, it's just been uh, an amazing journey otherwise. What made you decide to join the organization? So I think it was a mixture of two things. I very much enjoyed my experience in terms of working um, on the social impact side of things. And I did intern, I, I 
worked with other social impact organizations, but something about the mix of youth development and social development really appealed to me. I think that was, uh, that was unique, at least back then in India, and even now I'm not sure if we do have an organization that engages these two groups um, so well and really brings about that longer term impact that we're looking at seeing. Because I saw that um, when you do social projects, you're definitely creating impact today, no doubt. But then who is going to sustain that impact if we don't educate the next generation of responsible leaders? And that's where I, I think I just found the interesting balance. Plus, I just love working with students. It, just, <laughs> it appealed to me. <laughs> Everyone loves working with you. So that's super cool. Um, awesome. Thanks for sharing. And I also just had this epiphany that um, all of us are on different continents at the moment. Um, so I'm here in Europe. Uh, Bradley's in Africa. You're in Asia being based in India. And now with that, we'll pass it over, I guess, to Jared, who's in the US at the moment. And it's like almost 7 a.m., so quite early. <laughs> it is early, at least the sun's coming up now. That's nice. Woo, more light in the room. <laughs> yeah, for real. Thanks, uh, PJ. My name is Jared Boyd. Um, I went to university in the United States. And then um, after that experience and being part of the Enactus team, it was called SIFE then, but being part of Enactus while I was there, I actually uh, joined the World Headquarters team and had a chance to, to hang out there for about 20 years working on, on different initiatives. And, and now, I'm, uh, now I'm an independent consultant, uh, but focus my time on helping run a family farm. Uh, it's an organic operation that we run. And, uh, and then my partner and I are really focused on raising rare uh, breeds of plants and animals and helping um, create biodiversification through, uh, through continued propagation of, of endangered species. So it's, uh, it's fun, it's been an incredible, it's been an incredible journey. It's really interesting. I think that all of us in some way have continued to carry our positive impact forward, right? I think once you have that heart that you, um, that I think brings you to an actus in the first place, you then somehow bring that in various ways throughout your life. So I think that's super, super interesting to see how it's still coming to life. Um, so with all of you guys joining us, I'm sure you want to hear a little bit about how, wow, we're doing an Actus World Cup virtually this year. What does that mean? How can you get involved? Um, and with Schmidt actually working with an Actus today, I'd love for her actually to share a bit um, with all of you about how an Actus World Cup is coming to life virtually this year, so vastly different than for all of us when we've attended it in person. Sure. So um, an Actus World Cup 2020 has come to life as of uh, yesterday. We started on uh, the 8th of September yesterday. It is, uh, I think it's a huge opportunity while all of us obviously miss seeing each other in person because I know Bradley, PJ, Jared, we've, we've kind of seen each other for so many years now. And we always reconnect at the World Cup. That was our one um, uh, in-person hangout every year. But I think this year what we've done is um, We've really seen this as a way to expand and act this, uh, in a way that everybody can join, truly everybody. Because we are, a con we are an organization that works with over 70,000 students and so many faculty advisors across 37 plus countries. And it's not easy for all of them to participate every year. Um, so with this World Cup being virtual, <clears throat> the interesting thing is we've kept uh, it live for all constituents in the, in the sense of it being uh, very actively engaging students um, on sessions which are related to students, um, alumni, as I think Bradley and PJ are going to speak a little more about that track. We've got a separate track for faculty advisors and academic advisors and lots of cool things for business leaders as well. Um, and all through the session, you'll notice, or all through our agenda, you'll notice that our sessions are either 20 minutes or 40 minutes. It's very short, very quick. Um, easy to attend and interactive virtual sessions. So it's not just observing, but there is a huge community out here um, that you can go and interact with, chat, get to know better, ask questions, etc. cetera. Um, plus some cool things that we've not done in the past. We've got a 77 second film festival that's on, that's open for everyone to vote. 77 seconds, very easy, very impactful. So please go take a look at that. We've got a one race for oceans happening. As we speak, we've got our top 16 competition going on and lots of uh, very interesting lead change sessions, which are uh, business and students um, coming together to talk on a variety of different, very relevant topics for today. 
So that's how the agenda has been drafted. Jared, from all your experience, is that how does that feel to you? 20 years of leading the World Cup um, experience, that, this must be crazy to you. <laughs> it is crazy. Uh, it, and it, I wasn't doing World Cup for all 20 of those years, but um, um, it's, it's crazy. I, I mean, I could have never imagined that World Cup would, would, uh, would end up being an online event. But I think, you know, I, I've been really fond throughout this whole thing and throughout the whole pandemic of saying that crisis can really facilitate incredible opportunities. And as bad as things are out there, it, for those of us that are innovative, it breeds an opportunity for us to come up with creative solutions. And, and there's so many cool things that we actually always wanted to have included in the World Cup that we were never able to obtain um, because the whole event was, was often structured around competition. And so we weren't able to do, I mean, we tried really hard to find pathways to create new opportunities for people to be able to engage and hang out together and, and be innovative and, and help each other come up with new ways to look at their, their projects and, and to just learn about each other. Um, but we were always so confined by those you know, the a day and a half of the entire event was consumed with that competition side of things. But but when you go online, you create these, you open up these new avenues and create these incredible opportunities. And, you know, as Schmidt has said, one of those is everybody being able to participate. So you take away that travel barrier and that, that incredible financial expense that comes with being able to go and be someplace physically. Um, and so now, you know, now internet is the barrier and that's still a real barrier for us to tackle in the world. But but internet is the barrier or technology is the barrier for, for having, you know, being able to, to sign in. And, and there's tons of people in the world that still don't have that, that we need to work on. But the opportunities for World Cup are, are things like expanding it. And, and also one of my true goals that I had for years, and we tried it in so many ways, was I always wanted a way for us to have a video of all 36 presentations a way for us to be able to catalog those and share them with the world throughout the year. And now we have it. And I judged yesterday for the opening round and holy cow, I mean, the videos are incredible. The narrative opportunity to be able to share the story of Enactus in such a clean, crisp way that we now have this catalog for us to be able to go out and share with other people. And it's, it's always so hard when you're part of Enactus, all of us know as alumni, it's so hard to say what it is to like really tell people and show them. And now we can say, just go click on this video and you can see what's happening in, in Kazakhstan or Tajikistan or, or in South Africa or in the Netherlands. And, and so you can share with people that true journey by being able to share those videos. And so I think, I also judge the 77 second film festival. And I mean, I just think the video quality that, that Enacta students today are putting out and the ability to tell that story is incredible. And it's awesome. It's a huge step forward. Yeah, Jared, that's very true. And funny you mentioned internet. I actually had to go somewhere else other than my house here in Nairobi because my internet wasn't strong enough for this event. So uh, luckily I had that opportunity. And those of us watching, you've also got the opportunity to join us live. And you may be wondering as an alumni, how exactly you can get involved in the World Cup this year. For starters, we hope that many of you has, have signed up as judges and plan to attend the, the closing ceremony this Friday. But besides that, that formal programming. We also have a lot of events that are for alumni only, uh, specifically catered for us, tailored for us, and built by us. And two, one of those is the Alumni Business Spotlight, uh, which is an opportunity to share stories of how Enactus alumni have taken the skills and experiences that they've gained at university and put them to work in their chosen career as they choose to continue to make a difference in the lives of others. And the second event is the Action Accelerator, which actually happened in, in August and we'll be sharing the results for that and the final round. And the Action Accelerator is an event to accelerate impactful initiatives that are already taking action to change lives. And we give them a diverse team from all over the world, senior leaders as mentors who work with them for three hours. And for the last two years, this has been an in-person event at the Enactus World Cup. But this year, we've also had the challenge of taking this virtual, and PJ will tell you a bit more about how we've done that. 
Yeah, Action Accelerator was, like Bradley said, designed by alumni three years ago, actually. We, we met up with some um, peers in the positive impact space from One Young World, perhaps you've heard of the organization, and the Circle of Entrepreneurs. And we all had this idea that um, we really have all attended so many events geared around ideation or inspiration, but we needed more around action. And in partnership with that, Bradley and I had actually just met at the London Enactus World Cup. And we were talking about how there's not enough happening for alumni. There's not really a platform for it at Enactus World Cup. And then we went to One Young World a week later. We ran into each other, genuinely didn't know we were going to be there um, in Colombia, um, uh, the days when we could travel. <laughs> um, and then we, we ran into each other and, we're, and then we met these other folks and we're like, OK, let's create this event. Um, and let's host it at the Enactus World Cup so that Enactus alumni can be involved, but so can other positive change makers around the world that are in these other organizations, because we're all really after the same thing, which is to achieve the UN global goals by 2030. So yeah, so we created the event. As Bradley said, it was in person. Um, maybe some of you have attended it in the past, but this year, um, just like the Enactus World Cup, we went online. And it really broke down a lot of barriers to have many people join us from around the world. We had over 150 attendees. We ran the event across three time zones. So in the month of August, we had an event for the Europe Africa time zone for Asia, Australia. And the most difficult one of all, the Americas, where Bradley and I were up uh, at, from 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. Uh, in the middle of the night hosting the event. But we basically had these um, innovators join together with a diverse group of people leveraging Zoom technology where you can go into breakout groups. And we worked together to overcome the challenges. And each time zone, we had about eight to 10 initiatives that were hacked during this time. And they worked together to overcome a challenge that this innovator was facing to really scale the initiative. And then they created a 77 second pitch. And at each event, we selected one winner um, after we had an esteemed group of judges decide which ones had the best um, results from the sake of current impact, scalability, and then sustainability, not just from an environmental sustainability perspective, but also from a revenue model. So can they sustain themselves from a revenue generation perspective? So we had these three um, time zones, these three winners. And on Friday, at the event that Bradley was talking about, each of these three idea captains will share their 70 second pitch with you guys and we would love for you to vote for the top idea because these are people who beyond their inactus experience in college and university have now moved on to bring that to their professional lives and yeah of course we should all be supporting fellow alums so really um really excited to see that happening and the online Enactus World Cup stage. And so we we ask that you join us then. Yeah, thanks, PJ. Um, just to close this out, I think um, it's, uh, we have over 500 people that were registered to attend this uh, welcome reception. So that's super awesome. It's such a great, again, a great multiplier of us coming together. But, um, you know, I think I just, I want to end us by issuing a challenge to all of us as alumni. So um, you know, we number in the hundreds of thousands and our opportunity to be able to make a difference in the world continues after university. And, and now is probably the greatest time at all for us to consider how do we get involved and, and how do we make sure that Enactus continues for years and years and generations to come. So I really want to encourage every alumni member out there that's watching this and or might watch it online to, to just look inside yourself, um, follow your heart consider how much Enactus has impacted your success and the opportunities that you had through the organization have, have in whatever way contributed to the success that you're experiencing today. And then figure out a way, whatever it is, financial time, whatever it is, to give back to the organization in that percentage. And that's the way we can continue to perpetuate this thing for everybody else. And I think it's a, you know, for me, I think about it as a duty and a responsibility. So financially, I can do it. So I'm a personal donor. And I just, I think it's important for us each to consider how we can get involved. One of those ways is the rest of this World Cup. So tune into the sessions, see what's happening and, uh, and join us for all the fun activities and then find ways to, to keep talking and grab a Zoom channel and, and, uh, and get a personal conversation going. So thanks so much. Well, we hope to see you at the opening ceremony coming up next. Thanks yeah, for right joining. Now. Thank you everyone for joining. Thanks everybody. <laughs> Good to see you all.